A rubber tire comes to life and starts developing a taste for killing. It then starts to feel for a girl and goes through an existential crisis after it sees itself in a mirror. Will the tire stop its killing spree? You'll have to stick around to the end to see how the whole story unfolds. Hello and welcome to Comedy Recap. Today we will give you a recap of the film Rubber. Spoilers ahead, obviously. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. The movie starts with a bunch of chairs placed in a deserted area while a man waited patiently holding up a bunch of binoculars. A car then drives by while crashing into each one of the chairs. The car stops in front of the man and from its trunk a man appears who starts to give a speech to a group of people. The man explains the randomness as being part of many great films and that they needed to appreciate the art. He then sat back in the trunk and the car left. The other man handed the binoculars to the group and they started to look at the story which awaited them. The camera moves over the dusty land and all the scrapes. We then see a rubber tire halfway stuck in the dirt. It wiggles its way out of it and starts to move. It fights hard to keep its balance. It finally stops in front of an empty plastic bottle that it crushes after understanding what it is. The crunching sound of the bottle gave motivation to it, which it then used to crush a scorpion right after. The tire now moves freely and now had faced a glass bottle. It tried to crush it, but it seemed to require some work. It tried multiple times to crush it, but failed. The tire got angry at the failed task and started to generate some kind of power. The power concentrated directly at the core of the bottle, and it finally smashed it without the tire even touching it. The group of audience, who were bored at first, is now really interested. The tire now moves freely again in search of some purpose. It found a metallic can lying around and used its power to again destroy it. Time passed by and the little tire got tired. It decided to finally rest beside a tree. The next morning it got up and left for the journey that was ahead of it. The group of people also had slept that night and woke up as the tire continued its journey. The tire now found a rabbit for his next challenge. It concentrated its power again and killed the poor rabbit, spilling its guts everywhere. A car was traveling by with a girl driving it. The tire decided to up its task and concentrated its power on the car. It finally managed to stop the car by seizing its engine. The tire then rolled towards it in hunger for the kill, until another car drove behind it and smashed it accidentally off-road. The tire grew mad and crushed a crow that sat innocently beside it. Sheila, who was the girl in the car, passed the gas station and saw the man who aggressively passed by her. She flicked him off and went her route. The man ignored her and filled up his car and then sat back about to leave. He then saw a tire standing right outside his truck. The tire, which was mad at him for hitting it on the road, decided to kill him by popping his head right where he sat. The tire fled the scene immediately. It then went to some motel where it found the same girl. It then found Sheila undressing and then showering, which made it think over its life and started to make it feel different. The group of people saw the scene and thought the tire was now falling in love with the girl. The tire got to the next room from Sheila and was watching a channel in which a girl performed exercises and then watched a girl dancing on the beach. We now see a man sitting in his room cleaning his shoes. He gets a call from his master who assigns him a task. He listens to him and accepts the task as the turkey in his room stares randomly into his eyes. He then drove to the group of people and gave them the turkey he killed and cooked. All the people started to fight over the meat and ate like animals. The next morning a maid came to clean the tire's room and heard the shower running. She went to the bathroom and saw the tire under the shower stream. She then took the tire out of there and threw it out of the room. The tire got mad and enters back into the room slamming its door. A kid saw the tire moving and reported it back to his guardian who didn't believe him and told him to get him a pizza. We now see the tire has killed the maid watching television and sitting on his bed with blood covered sheets besides it. It then saw the girl leaving her room so he followed. It then saw the girl swimming in a pool. The boy who went out to get pizza came to the location where the crow had died and put its crushed insides on top of the pizza. The girl later left and the tire jumped into the pool and sank. The group of people who ate the turkey all got sick and poisoned, while a man in a wheelchair who didn't need it sat and saw the rest of the show. The boy passed by the tire's room and checked it out only to find blood everywhere. Cops were then called to look into the matter. The boy tried to explain to his father and the cop that the tire in the pool was accountable for killing as he saw it move. His father again scolded him and told him to leave. Now we see all the people from the group had died and only the man in the wheelchair had survived. The head cop came and told his fellow cops to go home since everything wasn't real and proved this to them by making them shoot at him. 
He didn't die, thus proving his point, and further telling that everything was fake, even the corpse. A man who brought the turkey earlier came to the cop and told him that the master was watching from afar. The head cop reacted seriously and then told the other cops to just forget what he had just said. The cop and the father sat and discussed his relations with the victim. The tire then suddenly came back to consciousness and burst open the father's head. The cop saw the headless body and then saw the tire move away and realized that the kid was right from the beginning. The tire went freely on its way again and it finally saw a broken mirror. It stood in front of it and saw itself. It then started to question its existence and what its purpose truly was. The kid sat beside him and asked if he could speak. The tire left without killing him for some reason. The kid then reported back to the cops about the tire's location. The tire rolled cluelessly down the road as a cop car followed it. The tire decided to turn around and pop the driver cop's head. The master sat far away and saw the tire kill mercilessly as his assistant brought him some food to eat. He told him that he wasn't hungry. The assistant decided to eat the food himself and later on got poisoned and then died. The tire now went to a location where people were burning tires. The tire saw the moment and then decided to kill his kind just like he killed his. The cops came to a residential area and found lots of bodies without heads. They then got reported about its location. They set up a dummy with a voice recorder on it to lure in the tire. The tire came out and just stood beside it while the cops in the car tried everything. The master then came to their van and told them to use faster methods like a bazooka and blowing it up rather than using the dummy. The cop decided to use his method and continued. The tire blew up the dummy's head and went inside. The head cop had enough and went in with his shotgun. He then shot at the tire and brought its remains back to the master. The soul of the tire now traveled into a kid's tricycle. The master screamed to the head cop, but he didn't hear him. He then tried reasoning with the tricycle that he was just a watcher, but it burst him whole and crushed his wheelchair. The tricycle then went its route and started to recruit tires from all over the area. In the end, it made a team of more than 10 tires and started its new journey of killing randomly. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.